all those that are joining us on the broadcast today, we're really, really glad that you did. You're going to be in for a treat with Pastor Wes as he gives us a message about the adventure of a lifetime. Come on, Pastor Wes, and bring us the word. Thank you. So this morning, I want to tell you a story about a little baby. At least get us all the ladies going, ah. And he was born to two very normal parents. Yeah, that's not an R one. That's the same as everybody else. There was nothing exceptional. Born in a very ordinary situation, very ordinary family, very ordinary maternity ward. In a typical world, do you know what the best thing about this baby was? Do you know how this baby was born? Naked. It's funny, all babies come out naked, don't they? Do you know what the baby wanted? Milk. Do you know what the baby did in their nappy? Do you know, even Graham wasn't born in a vest and a tie. He wasn't. You had one on within 24 hours. With a set of long johns over the nappy. Do you know, each and every story about every single person that's ever been on an adventure was born exactly the same as me and you. They were. The greatest kings and queens were born wearing nothing. They didn't drink anything different. There was no special royal milk. It was just mum's milk or out of a formula, whatever it was. It's the start of every single story. It's the start of my story. It's the start of your story. That's how life starts. That's how an adventure of a lifetime starts. Also, we all thought, until we met, somebody that wrote the story. Because the adventure of a lifetime is not what I choose to do. I could go and climb a mountain. I could go and explore a river, run and do something. It's fun, exploring God's creation, but that's not the real adventure that God has planned for me. Because no matter what I do, if I do it outside of God's plans for me, it's never going to be that good. Because it's never going to fulfill what was planted on the inside of me for me to fulfill. So I can go and put all my effort into something and come out with a real naff adventure. I can go and do fantastic things, but my journey and my journeying to get there, actually quite ordinary. But when I start to do the one or two things that God had planned for me to do, wow, wow. That's where the adventure starts. That's where it changes from being just good to being extraordinary That's where purpose starts to go from feeling, this is good, I've got a good life, to being, this is absolutely, unbelievably fantastic, and you have no idea how good, how exciting, how fulfilling my life and my purposes actually are. And if you're living in the mundane, day after day after day of life, God has something different for you. Where every single day, you'll reach the end of the day and go, yes. Do you know what that is? His plans and his purposes for you. And if you wanted nothing more than a a message from me today and this was the only thing you took home, you need to do it. And this morning we're going to explore a little bit of that, of are you achieving the journey and the adventure that God has got planned for you? Because I want for me, and I want for every single one of you, to be on your adventure of a lifetime. Not to go and do something crazy, but to go and do what God's adventure for you is. Because then you'll find your true purpose. You'll find your true understanding, and you'll just go, I'm fulfilling everything that I was created to be. When I was a baby, there was nothing in me other than doing what God's plans were me for, were for me. Because that's how God created you. 
You know, in Psalm 139, verse 16, it's a great verse. And it says that your eyes saw my unformed body. And then, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before even one of them came to be. That was for me. Before I was born, God saw me. He knew exactly what I could achieve. He knew exactly what I could be doing. Whether I choose to do it or not, that's my choice. But God knew what my best plans in it were and he knew what I was going to go and do. Do you know what? Before you were born. God knew every single little thing about you. He knew how he'd wired you. He knew what life experiences you were going to have and he knew what your plan A was. He knew your mountaintop. He knew your river. He knew what it would be like for you to stand on the edge of your Grand Canyon and see something that was so, wow, I never believed this could possibly ever happen to me. And he still got it out there for me and you to achieve, to see, to run into, to go on our adventure, to go on our journey, because then when we get there, we're going to go, wow. There was a little wow moment for a lot of you this morning and some of us this week when 256 extra chairs were installed in our auditorium. And it was just, wow. I posted something on Facebook and said, look what the Lord has done. And it's marvelous in our sights. Because when you can see God's hand at work, it's amazing. I don't just want to see God's hand at work in this church and what God's called us to do to reach extra people. I want to see God's hand at work in your lives in my life where I can see what God's done in every single one of our lives and I can go yes and I can rejoice with you and you can rejoice with me and together we can see God's kingdom come on earth because it happens with me and you on our adventure towards what God has got planned for us you see God's plan for humanity was actually for us to be in the garden of Eden with him it was walking with him talking with him exploring with him eating just having a fantastic life that was God's plan for me and you and then in Genesis 3 verse 17 because of the choice we'd made we had to toil it's a choice we made it's a choice we made to not keep going God's way and it's a choice we made to start to say do you know what I know better that's what the choice was the choice was I don't want to do it your way I want to do what feels right for me I'm in charge I'm going to do it my way me, me, me and you know it's a problem that we've been getting wrong for years it's a problem that I still battle with every day and so do you to say no and to say yes to say no to myself and to say yes to God because it's one of those battles and you know what when you get it wrong for yourself and you say I'm going to do it my way do you know what it is? toil but when you do it God's way the doors start to open things start to go well your path starts to become easy your burden is light and the blessings of God start to flow over your life they might not come on day one but they'll come and they'll come and they'll come do you know it's very easy to stop a little leak do you remember the image of a a boy with his finger in a dam stopping it do you know what happens if that dam wall disappears no little boy is ever going to stop that dam from careering and collapsing and flooding the whole thing and it's the same with God once we start to let God work the hole gets bigger God starts to bless us more more and more things come and before we know it we've got a flood from heaven down on every single one of our lives where God just wants to bless us totally and abundantly and we'll start to live that on our great adventure now there's lots and lots and lots and lots of examples in the Bible and in history of people that did it God's way and went on God's adventure for them 
There's great missionaries who went to Africa and saw great things. There's great evangelists who've seen miraculous healings and things happen. There's the most amazing things that have happened in people's lives. Do you know, in this congregation right here and people watching at home, you've had or know of personal experiences of things that have happened in people's lives that you went... You almost want to say, I don't believe you. Except for the fact that you know them and you know how credible some of those people are. And you go, I can't not believe you. And I've seen some of those things and I've experienced some of those things. How, why, where, when, that's amazing, it's fantastic. That sort of attitude is the attitude that God wants us to have. Because that's how he wants our lives to be. Filled with those things that everywhere we tell our story, people see God. And you know what? God isn't very ordinary. God is very extraordinary. God's adventures for you that you will experience day after day after day to other people will be, what? Wow! Really? Because God's plans for you are just totally extraordinary. And they can be extraordinary. It can be the best adventure in Wakefield. Because do you know what? Wakefield is not boring and is not ordinary because I live in Wakefield and you live in Wakefield and you know what else God's plan for Wakefield is as big and as good as God's plan for anywhere else in the whole world God planned me planned for me to be here so do you know what my mission central and my adventure central starts from here it starts from right right where you're at right now I love the fact that Jesus before he went in lots of different gospels and lots of different places gave us this great sort of command and in Acts 1 verse 7 and 8 it says it's not for you to know the times or dates the father has sent by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you so you've got power the ability to go on your adventure because of what Jesus Christ has done and you will be my witnesses where? in Jerusalem here in Judea there in Samaria Lancashire (laughs) and to the ends of the earth God's plan for every single one of us is to go and be his witnesses. Not just using our own brain, but using the Holy Spirit to be able to go and be his witnesses. Why? It's the greatest adventure that we could ever be on. In Mark 16, 14, he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Tell your story to all creation. In fact, it's not just tell your story, it's tell his story about the goodness of God to all creation whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned and these signs will accompany those who believe okay we're not just going out here on our adventure with the Holy Spirit to enable us we're then going to go out and do witnessing telling people talking about Jesus and in my name we drive out demons speak in new tongues pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them and they'll place their hands on sick people and they will get well when we start to do the adventure that God's got planned for us with the Holy Spirit with us enabling us your adventure with God is going to be anything other than ordinary it's going to be anything other than boring it's going to be anything other than mundane I'm not saying go and do some silly things. There was a guy recently who in his church had a snake bite his arm and died. You, hear me. We're not crazy. Okay? But when strange things happen and miracles happen and bad stuff maybe against you happens, God is going to protect you in a way that you don't know and it's going to be called Miraculous. And you know what? You're going to be able to lay your hands on people that the doctors say can't be fixed. And you know what's going to happen? Fixed. And you'll pray for situations. No earthly way this should work. 
really? Pray about it, it works and it happens and people go, how? Then they want to call it a fluke or an anomaly or something else and then you do it again. Okay, really fluky. But you know, God works with signs and wonders, things that I don't understand, things that science aren't going to be able to explain, things that they're not hyped up but they're going to be real because the power of the Holy Spirit is going to enable things to happen do you know what it's not just going to be because the pastors here are doing those things because this wasn't please send the pastors out to all the world to go and preach the gospel it's going to be every single one of me and you because God didn't just call me in an adventure I've got an amazing adventure God called you to be on his adventure as well and you're going to see some of the most amazing things that you never dreamed could ever happen happen in your life because of you connecting with God and deciding I'm going on his adventure I'm going on the adventure of a lifetime do you know the first disciples take the disciples on that first day in Acts where the Holy Spirit came there's 120 of them they were pretty ordinary guys they were Hebrew Jews. They were not sophisticated Judean Jews. They were not Hellenistic Jews. They were almost backward, simple Yorkshire folk Jews. I'm not saying that Yorkshire folk are simple, okay? Hear me on this. But they were as ordinary. They were as ordinary as anybody else. They weren't. They were born naked. <laughs> the same as me or you. They were just ordinary people they were very down to earth they were very ordinary they were all workers most of them were fishermen they weren't very well educated they weren't great orators or preachers they were just typical people with an ordinary religious background with an ordinary upbringing with ordinary families but one thing very unique happened to them Jesus walked by and said come on follow me very 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 simple Mark 1 17 come follow me and I will make you fishers of men notice every single time Jesus calls somebody in the Bible he asks them to go and do something reach others the adventure Jesus wants for me and you and he's called every single one of us. Jesus has walked through your life at some point and said, come on, follow me. Be a Christian. Do it right. Stop doing it your own way. I've got an adventure for you. I've got a plan and a purpose for you. And God's adventure is always going to be to go and reach other people for him. Because he wants his kingdom to come. And his kingdom comes through me and you doing our part, being on our adventure and seeing great things happen in the kingdom of God so there was a guy called Peter he was one of the disciples guy got really close to Jesus and he was a good guy for blowing it but you know what, on one morning early in the Bible, early in 36, 34, 35 AD, whatever time they reckon it was the guy who'd rejected Jesus three times and said, I don't know you. I want nothing to do with you. I've had nothing to do with you. Stay away. One guy stood up and preached a sermon. He was never known for preaching before that point in time. And 2,888 people got saved one sermon. And it wasn't even that long. It wasn't. But... 2,800 plus people men actually plus everybody else got saved one day a simple fisherman a relatively ordinary person followed Jesus and chose to do what Jesus wanted he then went on the most amazing adventure of a lifetime and Acts reports that he became a great evangelist he went and planted churches he went and saw great miracles he even walked down the street and his shadow touched people and they got healed 
just because his shadow walked by them. What? His handkerchief out of his pocket. They went and laid hands on people and they got better. They kept nicking his clothes. They did. They nicked his apron to go and lay hands on people. To go and. Hey, some of the things that happened in Peter's life were incredible because he chose to go on his adventure with God to go and do the one thing that Jesus asked him to do go and preach and be a fisherman of men of people let's come on an adventure with God and let's go and see great things because it takes every single one of us God might not have called you to go and preach to 3,000 people he might not have called you to plant 200 churches he might not have called you to be a great evangelist in the natural sense but God has called you to do everything that Peter did and everything that everybody else who's gone before you has done because the power that God has given you is limitless and the abilities that God wants to give you are beyond what you could possibly imagine they're absolutely outstanding and amazing and it's not going to be somebody else if you say yes to go on the adventure that God's got planned for you it's going to be you and if you're sat next to somebody and think it's going to be them it's going to be them it's going to be them it's only because you say no because God wants to use you in such an extraordinary way that you've got no idea what God can do with you you might be young and think when I'm a bit older you might be old and think well I'll help somebody else I I love this and I believe this with a passion in me. If you're living and breathing, God hasn't finished with you yet. That's the truth. It only takes you saying yes. It just takes you responding when Jesus says, come on, follow me. You say, I'm going on an adventure. I don't care whether I've got five days. I don't care whether I've got 80 years. I'm going on an adventure. I'm going on an adventure with God. You know, the Bible is filled with great examples of people who went on an adventure. Have a think about some of these guys. Gideon. Very. I'm the lowest in my clan. I'm the lowest person that exists. Why? I'm no good at this. Why me? Incredible victory. Wasn't Gideon's strength. Wasn't Gideon's planning. God's planning. God's strength. God's anointing. Gideon said, I can't. God said, I can. You know, if you want to learn a lesson, learn a lesson from Gideon. If you say, I can't, great, neither could Gideon. God enables us to do things that we didn't think we could possibly do. David, just an ordinary shepherd boy, killed Goliath, became king. What a connection he had with God. Noah saved all humanity because he chose to build a desert, build an ark in the desert. Abraham, Joseph, Ruth, Esther, Samuel, Elijah, Daniel, Joseph and Mary had a child by God. the disciples they all chose to follow him Paul, Luke, Timothy, Barnabas Silas, Stephen Philip what about this one? Jonah God asked Jonah come, go here's an adventure for you the whole of this city is going to be destroyed because they've been offending God and I can't tolerate it anymore but you're to go preach to them don't worry they're all going to get saved and it's going to be fantastic what does Jonah do? see it I'm off he did rejected it went away belly of a fish thrown upon the beach next to Tarshish he goes and does his job the city gets saved then he gets his monk on he sees the most amazing miracles through him and then he goes and sits under a tree then he complains about the tree so God kills the tree (laughs) 
amazing things happen all over the Bible with very, very ordinary people and some extraordinary ones as well because God wants to use you and me. God takes ordinary people, particularly those who are starting to live their life right. Don't worry if you're not. Get it sorted out because just like me, we all keep getting it wrong from time to time. But let's start to live lives that want to get it right. That keep saying, I'm not going to keep falling in the same places. Why did God use Noah? He was righteous. Don't care what the movie says. If you've seen it and it's any good, fantastic. If you've seen it and it's rubbish, that's fine too. I don't care. I haven't watched it yet. I read what's in the book. Noah was a righteous man. God was looking over the face of the earth, wanting to use righteous people and who did he find one man do you know what I want when God looks over Wakefield to see me and to see you and to see every one of us because we're wanting to live it right before God because we're not choosing to live a life that's full of sin and saying it's okay God will still forgive me he will but I want to be one of those people that God looks at and his face smiles at and he says that's my son You know, God uses every single one of you. He loves every single one of us. doesn't matter what we did. He still died for me and you. And he still says, come on. doesn't matter who you used to be or what you're still doing in life. Come on. I still want you. I still want you to be part of that. There is still a unique and amazing plan for every single one of us. And it just takes every single one of us following Jesus... And then jumping into that life, that amazing adventure that God has got planned for you. So don't let anything stop you. Okay, there's a few things in life that I think people will say, that's really good, Pastor. I want to go on that adventure, but you don't know my finances. That's right, I don't. And you can't afford it. But God knows how much you earn, how much provision he's got for you, and what you need, and he's promised to provide it. Is that what it says? So if God's promised to provide it, and God says he knows everything you need, then God will provide it. He knows the provision he's made for you and he knows what provision is around the corner. He knows how bad you are at wasting money at the moment. Hear me there. Because we don't always make good financial choices, do we? Sometimes we buy things that aren't right, but God knows. And if we get God right, things are going to go great and everything's going to be able to be afforded. You know, are you prioritizing God in your finances? Because if you're prioritizing God right in your finances, you'll have enough. God doesn't see your financial situation and thinks, ah, that's going to stop them going on an adventure with me. The only person who sees that is you. God sees, look at all this provision that's out there that I'm waiting for them to connect with. Look at all this provision that I've made for them. You might say, I would go on the adventure, but my job, my work commitments, because I've got to go to work to pay the mortgage. Yep, God gave you them. God knows all about your work. You might have just said yes to every single opportunity that comes along to you. Maybe God has called you to be the CEO of your company and to work every single day under the sun so you can become the CEO and then advertise, come to Microsoft and meet Jesus. He might have done. Apple, take a bite of the kingdom of heaven. I can't think of any other dodgy puns, but you know what I mean. God might have called you to do that, but it will be for a very, very obvious season and for a very obvious reason that will advance his kingdom, not your pocket. Because that's the way that God does it. Maybe God has probably said to you, here's a really stable, really committed, perfect job for you. 
that if you listen to me and say yes to the right things and no to the wrong things, you're going to have more than enough time and flexibility to do everything that God has laid out for you. That might mean you say no to working on a Wednesday night or no to working on a weekend or no to some other bits and pieces in time. But do you know what? If you do it, let's not be crazy here, okay? Do it right and do what the Spirit of God is telling you in the middle of it because God's plan for you, your work, will not stand in the way of God's plans for you because he gave you the job. If you haven't got a job yet, don't worry, God's got one planned for you. You'll be surprised what your boss will get out of you when you're living on God's adventure. You'll be surprised how blessed your company will be when God's put forwards in your work life, church life, spiritual life balance. Before you know it, you'll be a really important person in your company, not because of the hours that you do, but because of the anointing of God that's on you that's blessing your company. And before you know it, your boss will see you as a real key employee. And they won't quite know why. But it's all because of God. God doesn't see your work situation as being an issue that stops you going on his adventure that he's got planned for you. Family and relationships. My wife. My kids. My children. I know they're wonderful. I've got a fantastic two girls and a fantastic wife. And I give thanks to God every day. He gave them to me. He did. So he knows all about them. He didn't give my wife to be a ball and chain to me. I don't care what the jokes are. He gave my wife to be a blessing to me. He gave my wife to be my helper. To enable us two together to go further and do more than I could achieve singularly. That's what God's plan for my wife and my children was for me. God gave you your family situation so don't beat God up about it if you're the guy be the head of your house and put God first in your house and make sure God is first because then you'll start to live the family life that God has got planned for you if you're a wife make sure that God's in the center of every single thing that you're doing teach your kids do everything that you need to do as a wife in the house supporting your husband in God's ways in the way that God's got planned for you if God hasn't given you a family yet well he's either got a Mrs. Right a Mr. Right or a Miss Perfect still laid out for you or maybe he's calling you to be like Paul in 1 Corinthians that says better that I be single because I can achieve more I'm sorry for you if that's you because you're missing out on what God on what God's enabled me to experience which is fantastic but if that's where God's called you to be be happy and do everything that God has got planned for you hey take the adventure with your family when you put God first in your family the blessings that you'll get as a family are just unbelievable I grew up with that experience and I have no regrets in my family that God came first that church came first because the family time that we had was better than anybody else's around me I looked at my friends and went why do you struggle to want to do that we have an amazing time yeah we don't get to do it quite as much because we don't get to go to the coast every Sunday but you know what when we go on a Saturday it's even better and it's amazing how God works on those things keep God at the top of your family keep God at the top of your weekly agenda of clubs and activities and finances and budget and all those sorts of things put God first Put God first to pray together. Put God first to read the word of God together. Put God first in how you're training your kids. Don't pick the latest idea that's just being pushed at school or in the news. Put God first. Then God will bless you. Because then you're not going to have an ordinary family. You're going to have a family based on an amazing adventure of a lifetime that God has got laid out for you in your family. You know... God doesn't see your family situation as being a problem to him being having a great adventure for you to live. He sees your family as being something that he put there for you to go on an adventure with. What about past hurts? Many people carry wounds from previous mistakes. You might still have some scars. 
You might still limp. Do you know what? God knows all about them. And he wants to protect you from harm. God doesn't want to expose you to pain and suffering. He wants to keep you and protect you. You might have been through some things that weren't good for you. But you know, even when you were going through those things, the only thing God wanted to do was reach out his arms to you, cover you up, protect you, love you, repair you, heal you and restore you because that's the loving father that God is. God knows about your past hurts and is just desperate for you to start on an amazing adventure that he's got planned for you. That's what God's plan is. It's never ever too late to start with him. And then what about this? Pride. Or really, I'm too scared and embarrassed. Too many people are scared and embarrassed about starting on their journey, about achieving their journey. God doesn't want you to fail. You know YouTube moments where you fall and everybody else laughs? God hasn't got things planned for you to fall and fail and have everybody laugh at you. God wants you to be successful. He wants you to be of good reputation, of good standing, of somebody who can stand up in society and stand up in your neighborhood and say, this is the example that I want to follow. This is the example of somebody who's got it right with God, who's going with God, where things work in their life because they put God first. He wants you to be a pillar in your society. He wants you to be a pillar in your family. He wants you to have the best reputation. God knows everything that you can handle. He does. And he's promised to never give you too much without a way out. We can still make mistakes. Problems might still come along, but he's given us everything we need to overcome every single obstacle that's going to be on our great adventure. God knows what you can handle. And you know what? If you're in a little tough time, it'll be worth it. Because when you come over the top, and you can see your adventure unfold in front of you, you'll go, yes, yes. Life's greatest adventure that there could ever be is when me and you start to live God's plan. When me and you start to do things that God has planned for us, that it stops being me and it starts being him. It stops being my agenda and my diary and starts to be God's purpose, plan, and journey for my life. It stops being me saying, my job, my family, my wife, my kids, my finances, my embarrassment, and it starts to say, doesn't matter. God. Stop saying, I'm going to do it my way. It starts to say, no matter what it takes, I'm doing it God's way. I want to ask you a few questions. And over this next, I don't know how long it's going to take for you to connect with God and God to speak to you very, very clearly. I don't believe it's going to be long. Some of you have already had it. But have you ever been closer to God before than you are right now? Have you ever been more connected? Felt like you're on his adventure more? You're in his journey more than you are now? got to get back on track got to jump back on the adventure and say I'm going to see God's kingdom come through what I'm doing is God getting the best out of you or are you giving it to something else first are you giving it to the social agenda are you giving it to your boss are you giving it to something else or is God getting it Are you holding yourself back because you don't think you can afford it? Are you letting your job rob you of actually going on the adventure that God's got planned for you? Are you using your family as an excuse? But I've got kids. They're demanding. They've got issues. There's no time because by the time we've done everything that we need to do with the kids to be good parents, we're too tired out or there's no space left for God. Are you held back by embarrassment and fear? Never actually starting, never actually getting on your journey. Whatever it is, 
it's time to let go and say, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. And the song then goes, I will ever love and trust him. And in his presence, I'm daily going to live. Every part of you is going to be in the center of the adventure that God's got planned for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I know the plans I have for you. Not for somebody else. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. If you like, plans to give you an amazing adventure with him. Maybe today you don't even know Jesus Christ as your saviour. Maybe you've never been on any journey with God. Today's a day that you need to say, I'm going to start. I'm going to be on my journey. I'm going to be on my adventure. And I'm going to start to get to know who Jesus Christ is. I'm going to be a Christian. Maybe you've reached a place where you're so far out of tune with God. And today you need to come back and say, God, I'm going to do it again the way I once did. I'm going to run your race the way I used to run. I'm going to connect with you in a way that I haven't done again for years. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to rededicate my life with you. Maybe you've been just doing it half-heartedly. And today you need to shake yourself up. And you need to say, God's way only. I'm going to go on that adventure and I'm going to do it every single step with every single breath I've got and nothing's going to get in my way anymore. Whatever it is, you need to take grasp of it. I just want to, with everything that's within me, don't leave this place today without having made that decision. I'm on the adventure like never before. I'm going to let God use me like never before. I'm going to see the most amazing, miraculous signs and wonders like I've never seen before because that's what God's adventure for you is. For those of you who can, stand with me and let's sing this. Great old hymn. And in these moments, I want you to really connect with God. If that means that you sing the words, sing the words. If that means you just... Stand there with your hands in the air, just connected with God. Stand there and connect with God. This is only between you and your Heavenly Father this morning. It's nothing else, just you and God. Right now, Lord, I pray that you'll help every single person who's here, live, who's watching me on the broadcast, that you will just speak to them. You'll put your arms around them, that you'll give them a glimpse of the great adventures that you've got planned for them. Lord, fill them up with your Holy Spirit again. Send them out, Lord, to be effective for you.